Here's the kit, uh, stock, built out of the box, no paint, not too impressive, looks okay, it's a good base to work from. Then here, with bare plastic, minimal paint, marker pens and weathering. Yeah, Gundam marker pens. Giveaway. Yes, I'm giving this away. Please click the button top right of your screen. At the end of this video, if you'd like more details, my supporters have access to a 30 minute deep dive version. Testing out new paints and techniques is all part of making models. We just never know where our next breakthrough is going to come from or if uh, we find something that we'll just absolutely love and will become a must included uh, paint or technique in all of our builds. So here I wanted to try brushing on some of these uh, Mission model paints primers. Now they're water-based non-solvent acrylics so uh, it was a rainy day here and I thought I could test them out. Talking with the owner, uh, Mr. John Tamkin, he suggested that I should use thinner with these but not the poly mix. So uh, I'm adding a little bit here, just a couple of drops and let's test out and see how it performs. Excalibur making a reappearance here. Uh, I pre-dip it in, uh, in water to, uh, to keep it wet, protect the brushes just a little bit. And you can see it mixes really nicely. It's really good stuff. It looks a lot like Mr. Surfacer, but uh, doesn't have any fumes, uh, very little smell at all, and uh, mixed very nicely. Now, we'll get it onto some plastic and see how it goes. You can see, as I started brushing it on, I remembered that um, I was most impressed. It, uh, it went on very smoothly and uh, it self-leveled very nicely. Coverage was great, uh, very opaque. Uh, I didn't see any colors, uh, I didn't see any of the, uh, the plastic color poking through. Uh, it went far too, it was economical. Uh, I, I was able to cover um, quite a bit of area with, uh, with only a little bit of paint. It was very even and uh, I didn't need to retouch it much at all. So, you know, initially, super impressed with this and then the next part this is the part that gets really good when you're used to working with lacquer paints and then you get to do this boom look at that clean up in water you know dip it in bit of a swirl done clean good reshape of the brush and ready to go next i wanted to try it out with a pointier brush and see how it worked on uh, painting it into smaller areas here you can see I'm giving it a really good mix again. I did find that there was a little bit of separation, but amazingly, the paint hadn't really started drying out yet. So I, I remix with my brush, and then now uh, I'm painting it into some uh, to some smaller areas here that I plan to paint uh, different colors. You know, replacing the stickers and painting in some of the core key details of this model to make it look uh, much more appealing. Moving along, let's test out their white. Now, as you guys know, I paint a lot of white. Uh, I like it. I think it's one of my better finishes. And uh, using the white paint in any range, I think it gives you a really good overview. It gives you a good, uh, good feel for how the paints and uh, all the other colors are going to uh, perform. So, so I'm pouring some out here onto a paper palette. I'm looking to test their polyurethane mix additive, or poly as they call it. Now, as it's been explained to me, it increases the durability of the paint and makes it such that you can sand it and uh, it, it allows it to, uh, to be a lot stronger, more durable and apparently gives it a cool eggshell satin type finish which uh, I really like work, working with glossy or uh, satin, satin based paints so quite looking forward to that. Okay, I've got some tap water out and I've got them into three piles. The white paint, some poly and a little bit of water and uh, we'll give them a bit of a mix and let's see how they go. Now, I've given it plenty of time, the, uh, the primers uh, finally, uh, it took a couple of hours but uh, it eventually dried and it was really nice, it's, uh, it's a really good clean strong looking finish and here I am laying down, um, I'm putting it on pretty thick, I, I wanted to test how, how it works right, uh, usually the mantra with white paint is uh, multiple thin coats but uh, you know, I, again I say I'm impatient but I, I want results quickly and um, so long as you lay it down, you keep a relatively wet edge uh, and lay it down evenly, it should dry out okay. And uh, you know, I'm adding the poly to it, I just want to see what happens. And I'll be, I'll be perfectly you know, frank and upfront about this, I, I would like, if at all possible, to develop an acrylic based, uh, especially non-solvent water based, uh, approach to, to, to hand painting that could replace the, uh, the lacquer paints that I use. Of course. I use the lacquer paints for their uh, performance, you know, I don't do it for the fumes, I don't do it for the smell. If I could get the best of both worlds, of course, I would be all over it. 
that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I know it's a uh, it's a uh, holy grail quest. It's going to be very difficult to uh, to do, but you know this this paint has promise. So I'm uh, I'm willing to uh, to give it a uh, a good test run to see how see how we can do and what we can do with it. I mean it's easy to um, it's easy to say something's not working uh, until you put the time in to really test it out and see how it performs and build up some experience with it. Coming back, having let it dry, this is uh, what one coat over the grey primer, both layers hand brushed on, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's dried reasonably well, uh, you can see it's quite strong, I've given it a scratch, uh, a scratch and a sniff and a, and a scrape, and uh, quite durable, quite a nice looking finish. It's reasonably good, it leveled out and it flattened quite well. Okay, leaving that white, setting it aside to dry, I've really been, you know, I've been really interested to get back and try out Humbrols again. I haven't used Humbrols for, for quite a while. And um, Mission Model Paints, they didn't send me anything in uh, a brown, sandy sort of color, and I just happened to have these ones. So that was uh, a Duck, Earth, and uh, Satin White. Now, did you notice in the first shot, I didn't have my tool handy and ready for opening the paint? Uh, I could probably get away with not mentioning that, but I'd, I'd rather point out something. That's a minor blooper, and uh, I had a bit of a giggle sitting here by myself editing this that uh, you know I was totally unprepared for that shot. But uh, getting back into this, uh, make sure you mix these paints up. Um, enamel paints are a really different kind of beast. Um, they're, they're the original model paints, and uh, these ones really need to undergo a chemical transformation, and part of that is um, adding the thinner. The thinner is like a cat. The thinner it's not like it is. It's a catalyst to help the drying uh, process. So um, they, they, in a way, they kind they cook off. So uh, being in a in a hot place, etc., they'll uh, they'll dry off a lot more quickly. Uh, but make sure you give them a really, really good mix. Now, these are brand new tins. Uh, I just got them. So uh, the paint, uh, my Wave paint stirrer really comes in handy here. Um, now, I know these guys smell. Uh, they're a solvent-based paint. But, you know, it really brings me back to my childhood. I love the smell of Humbrols. Now, I'm not huffing it. I'm careful. Uh, I've got ventilation here. But it's a real natsukashi, uh, reminding me of my childhood sort of smell. So uh, clean off the lid. These things, you know, your paints, nothing sets off a thing of humbrols quicker than not cleaning off the lid. Make sure uh, you set that lid in properly again because uh, they're not cheap and uh, I bought these with money. So um, after you do that, I, I give it a, a spin. I don't want to mix up the white one with, uh, with dark earth, but uh, spooning that one out. Uh, this is a really good fast way. I, I like uh, using the tool cleaner to uh, to keep my momentum going. Well, I've well I've still got the uh, I've still got the bottle up, and I'm still all excited to be painting. Okay, weird side comment moment. Is it just me, or does anybody else really enjoy cracking open these Humbrol tins? I mean, you know, screw tops. They burn your fingers, you know, you're always rubbing off the thing. It's like your wife asking you to open up jars of, of uh, spaghetti sauce, right? But these things, it's like art craft time, you know, cracking them open. Uh, I, I know I'm getting something done when I'm cracking open humbrols. There's just something really good. It must be six-year-old Link um, thinking back to the uh, to the Spitfire. It's something like that. But cracking open humbrols, man, I love it. Now it's right about here that I kind of remember back to a time when uh, Humbrol White really failed me. Um, there's usually there's a couple of colors to be careful of in the old range of Humbrols. They, they've they've reinvented themselves over the years. You know they've been around forever. Um, but I remember uh, Humbrol Black and Humbrol White. I, I've had bad bad instances where the paints just wouldn't cure. They wouldn't dry and they wouldn't set up. So uh, I was a little bit nervous about this. But, uh, you know, that classy Humbrol smell, you know, it uh, uh, <laughs> I was feeling pretty good about it by this stage. I'm feeling, feeling excited to be back on the Humbrol, Humbrol kick. And the other thing that I really liked about doing this was, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to use paint that I know you guys have access to. Uh, you know, I'm not using some exotic strange paint. So um, I want to also make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm showing ways to use paints that, that you guys have access to so that these will be you know, directly applicable for you and useful. Even if you don't have access to the Humbrol brand, there's two other brands of enamels that are pretty good. There's Ravel uh, there in the US, which is very good. And uh, Tamiya, Tamiya uh, is, is pretty good. It doesn't cure uh, as well as, uh, as Humbrol and Ravel. 
but uh, the Tamiya stuff it, it is it's a good paint as well they're enamel paint they're acrylic paint don't get me started uh, we'll talk about that another time now here I am I'm, I'm mixing it up I realized at this stage that I didn't have the instructions handy but the instructions did say dark earth and white mix is a good match for the main armor of this Gundam and the percentage you know it was like 80 20 it was something like that so I just you know I eyeballed it I said okay a bit of this a bit of that I made a mix and uh, I thought you know hey that looks pretty good and uh, <laughs> I, I, I remember yelling out to my wife hey hey I matched the paint on the first mix first try boom you know it was like uh, it's like Batman in the in the Lego movie you know when he's chucking all those things to, to open the door and he eventually gets it on the 15th one it's like first try but uh, I actually did how's that for uh, geeky accomplishment of the day I was so happy that I'd gotten it on video to prove that I'd done it in one shot and uh, painting it on here, it's a pretty good match. But you know, I'll be honest though, after I really matched it up, it was probably one 1.5 shades, a little bit too dark. But uh, because you know, as humbrols, I'd kind of forgot. As you see it there, it looks dead on. But when humbrols dry, they darken up a little bit. So uh, it, it wasn't spot on, but it's on the back of the legs, which um, well, are probably heavily weather. So uh, I, can, I can live with myself and uh, keep some nerd pride in, uh, in doing a, a relatively decent mix. For the other leg here, I thought I'd try something uh, different and uh, a new skill. There, there I am, I'm cleaning off. I, uh, I missed a little bit of paint there, but I tried painting upside down for the camera. Uh, you know, spare no expense. Uh, really getting into the YouTube thing and uh, I thought I could uh, you know I thought you guys would be impressed with my brushwork fancy footwork two drops polyurethane additive go with one drop thinner none and two coats should be more than fine just putting it on like this I just I just pushed it into the into the shape that I wanted to cover. I'm standing up doing this. This is this is hard duty. Detail painting, standing up, doing it in front of a camera. Next, I am putting it over the uh, over some primer here. It wasn't that I forgot those other places. It was that I forgot. <laughs> so I, yeah, there were so many places to paint on this. I just forgot. Sorry. So uh, here, it, it did go a little bit better. It stuck to itself, its own primer, a little bit better. But still, the opacity. You know, even though it's over grey. Yes, I have a black primer problem. Yes, I should have used that. Would it be a pain in the ass to to put it uh, two sets of primers on? Yes, it would. Um, you know, economy of, um, what am I always saying? Economy of something, economy of talking. <laughs> I, I didn't want to do two layers of primer, but uh, you know, so, so test it out. And gray is a good medium one to test. Sorry, I got a little bit out of shot here. Um, there we go, I move it back in. But it did go on pretty well, pretty well. But I recover, the next video is gonna be about the recovering stages. This one was a little bit about, uh, it was really, kind of the tests and fails on this model and uh, in the next video I'll, I'll bring it together and I'll show you how I recovered from it. Now working to be a better modeler it, it, it's all great to have uh, wonderful techniques but most importantly I think is that you've got to know how to recover from mess ups. That's what really sets it apart and me and the guys in Japan we would always talk about this. It was recovering from the mess ups that made us good not the actual techniques that we're using. Okay more soon. Thank you very much for watching and making it all the way through this. Cheers guys. Bye.